Hey everyone, Dave here, and right now I'm preoccupied with the absolute weirdest scene in Ant-Man. Dave's obsession. Dave's obsession of the homo moment. Now, I'm not completely worn out on superhero movies yet, so I enjoyed Ant-Man for the most part. It was nothing groundbreaking, and I'll always wonder what Edgar Wright's version would have been like, and I am getting really tired of seeing the great Judy Greer reduced to playing the mom in every movie this summer because she deserves so much better. But it had a lot of fun, a fair bit of excitement, and quite a lot of humor. But there's one scene that's been weighing heavily on my mind ever since I saw the film. And no, it wasn't the scene where Michael Pena whistles It's a Small World, because apparently every Judy Greer's a mom movie also needs to be a theme park movie. It wasn't the scene where Thomas the Tank Engine is used as a weapon. It wasn't even the fact that Neil freaking Hamburger is in this movie. No, the scene that's been weighing on my mind is the very first scene in the film, before even the Marvel logo comes up. The scene is set in 1989 and features Hank Pym angrily storming in on Howard Stark, Peggy Carter, and... another guy, absolutely livid that S.H.I.E.L.D. is trying to steal his formula. Now, content-wise, this scene is nothing particularly noteworthy, other than finally giving us the Mad Men and Wall Street crossover we didn't even realize we wanted all along. But the technique for this scene is kind of crazy, because all three of the main characters in this scene are a different age than we usually see these characters, and the age adjustment is handled differently for each one of them. Now, this is not the first time we've seen older versions of Peggy Carter and Howard Stark. There's a precedent for how each of these characters are aged. But this is the first time we've seen their older versions together, and their precedents are different. Peggy Carter is always Haley Atwell, with old age makeup when she needs it because I think she's a distant relative of the McFly family. But old Howard Stark was John Slattery even before young Howard Stark was Dominic Cooper, and honestly they don't look all that much like each other. I mean, they look alike enough that I don't question it when they're in different movies, but after seeing young Haley Atwell spend so much screen time with young Dominic Cooper as young Peggy Carter and young Howard Stark, now we're supposed to see fake old Haley Atwell sitting next to real-age John Slattery as old Peggy Carter and old Howard Stark and just automatically buy that they have the same relationship? I mean, what kind of Darren Stevens nonsense are you trying to pull here? Yeah, right, as if we wouldn't notice. But then we come to Hank Pym, played by Michael Douglas, and the filmmakers knew that we already know what Michael Douglas looked like in 1989, so they figured us seeing anything other than 1989 era Michael Douglas in the role would just be distracting. So because like the rest of us they've already forgotten about the hubris of Tron Legacy, they digitally youngified Michael Douglas. And I'll admit, they did a pretty good job with the effect, but I was still distracted because it stood in such sharp contrast to the ageified Carter and Stark. We're dealing with both aging and de-aging characters in the same scene here, and we're dealing with three different methods of doing it. Digital, makeup, and recasting. And the thing is, none of them are particularly convincing because we all know these actors. We can tell that's makeup on Haley Atwell, we know she's not really that old. We know that John Slattery and Dominic Cooper are two different people, and we know that Michael Douglas stopped looking like that a long time ago. Now granted, I can't think of any better way to have done this scene, but even at their most convincing, the effects still took me out of it because they stood in such sharp contrast to each other. The very first scene in the movie took me right out of the movie. Now fortunately it was a short scene, and I enjoyed the rest of the movie just fine, but that first scene still lingers on my mind today. So what are some moments like that for you? Some strange moments in otherwise enjoyable films that just take you right out of it because you're too distracted by what went into the scene or why the filmmakers made the choices they did. Let me know in the comments, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off.